21 years. This is how long the average American spends online during their lifetime. But the internet has created some wonderful new opportunities. It's a source of knowledge and entertainment. It's decentralized our finances thanks to blockchain technology. We can find love by swiping right or left and make friends anytime with people we have never met. Think how crazy this would have been 30 years ago. In fact, it's hard to think of everyday life without technology or the internet. My question is, are we taking our online lives too far? I'm the first to be a real fan of everything digital, but we have begun to allow technology to replace real life interactions. According to the creative agency, We Are Social, the typical internet user now spends more than 40% of their waking life online. Like anything in life, if consumed to excess, the internet can have harmful consequences. An example of destructive behavior is online pornography. According to the American Psychiatric Association, the social impairment effects become similar to those of substance abuse, including a preference towards watching pornography over spending time with others, resulting in social disconnection and isolation. Due to the excessive amount of time we spend online, some pretty crazy innovations have seen the light of day, such as a man marrying an AI hologram in Japan. In Japan again, socialization has become so intricate that they now have restaurants with a chair surrounded by black curtains so people can eat alone and talk to no one. In Germany, they now have experimental warning lights on the floor near pedestrian crossings. These were made to catch the attention of smartphone users so they don't get run over by a car. I mean, this is quite smart, but isn't it a little bit crazy that we need this? In an age where we're becoming more connected through social media every day, it can sometimes feel like we're becoming less social. Concerns are growing that mobile devices is making humans more interested in their online lives and less interested in the real world. A survey by Thrive Global revealed that 74% of millennials prefer conversing digitally rather than in person. 11% of adults have become too lazy to socialize in real life and prefer to stay home on weekends watching TikTok videos instead of hanging out with their friends. And you might think, why is this an issue? When people start to replace real life interactions with digital communications, it causes a decline in face to face communication skills and emotional connection to one another. A decrease in those skills causes people to feel less comfortable interacting with each other in real life, causing social anxiety. Because people, people feel socially anxious in real life, they'll tend to avoid those situations and spend more time online creating a vicious circle that pushes people even deeper into the virtual world. Our social media accounts have become society's stamp of approval. Now, we not only need to forge our real identities, but also our online ones. Online, you can see teenagers asking this question. Am I the same Juliet in real life as I am online? I mean, the online Juliet speaks like the real Juliet, she even looks like her. But she's not all of what the real life Juliet is. She's only the fun parts. Without the tired or sick days, the long working hours, or the bad hair day. Keeping up the appearance of a perfect online persona puts unreasonable pressure on ourselves and sets unrealistic standards for others. Having likes becomes a double-edged sword that can take our self-esteem very high or extremely low. Let's look at this in terms of numbers. In real life, 
If someone doesn't give you a compliment, you're not affected. There's a null effect. If someone gives you a compliment, plus one. On social media, if someone likes your picture, plus one. But if someone doesn't, like, doesn't give you a like or doesn't like your picture, minus one. It translates into non-approval. To stop this vicious circle, we need to bring back real-world relationships. Humans, face to face, are naturally agreeable creatures, which brings on positive interactions, thus boosting self-esteem and making people want to socialize again. Don't get me wrong, social media can be social if used to connect, but not if used to replace real-life interactions. Another activity that has caused a drop in face-to-face -face communications is online dating. Global dating app usage increased with over 323 million people worldwide using dating apps. Tinder recorded 300 billion swipes in one day. 300 billion. It's huge. <laughs> Truth be told, there's some beautiful stories that, that arise from online dating. About 13% of people will find a partner they'll marry. The issue comes when people fully replace dating with dating apps. A research from VeryWellMind.com, an online newspaper, showed that most people on Tinder are there primarily for entertainment. Not for finding a date, a sexual partner, or true love. Moreover, a large portion of users said they felt frustrated in the pursuit of love. And I mean, this is not too surprising if all we can rely on is a profile picture and let's face it, a pretty cheesy bio. Facial expressions and nonverbal cues, which are not transmittable via a profile picture, have been recognized to play a crucial role in physical attractiveness. What we have noticed and the reason why a startup like mine exists today, is that we fall for someone by having this first interaction with them. A general feeling of attraction, a smile, a laugh, and very often, simply by exchanging a few glances. Increasing your chances at finding love is a good reason to use dating apps. But when you take into account that 53% of people lie on their profiles. The number of people who are not there to actually find something serious. The fact that most relationships do not rely on physical aspects only. It is very, very important to use dating apps as a complement and to not forego real life relationships. But not everyone is looking for love online. Sometimes it's about business. From LinkedIn, with a towering 810 million members worldwide, to Xing, or even Twitter at times, online professional networking has created constructive communities, allowing professionals to create an online presence with global reach. Although you can join conversations in groups, LinkedIn always, always advises you to only add people you know to not give spammy vibes. This means that you would still need to meet people in real life first. We do know that humans tend to trust other people more after picking up on their nonverbal cues and body language. According to the rule of communication created by Albert Merabian, who's a professor of psychology at UCLA, trust and liking are made out of only 7% verbal communications and 93% nonverbal cues. Because of the importance of nonverbal cues, you're more likely to create lasting connections with people after having face to face relationships or face to face conversations, as it creates a sense of bonding and trust. Human to human interaction online has created efficient but socially disconnected relations. We can reverse this trend by harnessing technology to help us collaborate and connect better in real life. I want to give you three examples of companies that are using technology to bridge our online activity and face-to-face -face communications. 
my startup, Quick Bond, allows people to get in touch with anybody nearby. We have developed a patented technology that allows users to send a message or introduce themselves with anybody nearby, like in this room, for example. We like to say the first hello is now easy. This was made to get over the awkward, difficult phase of introducing yourself to someone professionally or socially. Another example is Meetup. Meetup is an online platform that notifies its users if there are local meetups nearby for professionals with similar interests. Thursday. Thursday is a new dating app that organizes events in London and New York to help people meet in real life again. Their slogans, hashtag better in person, and because there's more to life than just dating apps. So, let's not forget to use technology as a means. It is not an end in itself. Thank you.